Samsung's Good Lock app is customization that's so deep, I had to split it across two weeks. I'm gonna bring you part two next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. Last week on the show, I was taking a look at the Z Fold 2 and a particular app that Samsung has in its own Galaxy store called Goodlock. This is an app that allows you to customize your Samsung devices in crazy ways, like all across the map. If you think it, you can probably do it, or at least you can have some sort of customization into it on Samsung devices. There's so much in there, in fact, that I couldn't fit it all into one episode. So today, I'm I'm bringing you part two of my deep dive into Samsung Goodlock. Now, last week we looked at the units portion of Goodlock, and this week, today, we're going to focus on the family portion. And we're going to start with Keys Cafe. Now, as it says here, you get to make your own keyboard, which is pretty awesome. Maybe you have a certain phrase or a word. Or in my case, I thought, hey, it would be nice to have a key on my keyboard that says twit.tv so I can just tap that anytime I want. Uh, you can go ahead and insert that into your keyboard and it makes inserting that into messages way easier. Or perhaps maybe there's a symbol that's missing from the symbol portion of the keyboard that you use all the time. It's not included in the default keyboard layout. Well, you can scroll through the many options. <laughs> there are tons of them and find space for it and drop it down there. Uh, maybe you just want to see what you can do to really mess with people's minds and create a Frankenstein inspired keyboard with everything that's totally out of order. I don't know. You can have a lot of fun with it. That's all I'm saying. All of that is possible here with a simple drag and drop interface. And that brings your preferred functions into the layout. And then you can also take them back out if you ever get bored of it. There's also happens to be a separate style section, which is more of a traditional theming engine for the keyboard. So you can, you know, pick a color palette that you like and uh, go from there. And there's also an effects tab that brings some colorful and lively animations down into the keyboard experience. So things kind of pop and splash and that sort of stuff. Go nuts and then tap the keyboard up top and you can kind of see the finished result and see what happens when you interact with it. Next up is Pentastic. Now I'm using the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and as such, Goodlock has a special section dedicated to the S Pen. You can choose from a few alternate air command menus. This is the menu that appears when you pull the S Pen from the inside of the phone. Um, there's also some custom and let's be honest, pretty cheesy pointer options for the S Pen. I'm sure they'll appeal to somebody. There weren't many options in here that I thought, hey, I need to change that. Uh, but thankfully you can import your own image and of course, I'm going to import this image that my daughter made. So uh, that's not cheesy at all. And finally, you can customize the sound that is played when the S Pen is removed, as well as when it's inserted back in. Again, many of these settings are a little on the cheesier side, but you do have the ability to import your own sound. So maybe you want to throw some, I don't know, Star Wars sound effects in there. That wouldn't be cheesy. There you go. Let, let your imagination run wild. Next up is Wonderland. Now this is a wallpaper, but it's more than just a static image wallpaper picker. It actually allows for you to select your own image, yes, and then give it some animated life when the device is tilted and used. And you can kind of see a few examples of this. There's a small collection of pre-made options there uh, that allow you to really get in there and work with the different layers to come up with something more unique to you, or you can just select it and go. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty cool to see how this interacts with your home screen uh, in everyday use. It's just a nice wallpaper toolkit that does a few extra things uh, based on how your whole Holding your phone. Uh, I like the movement here. Next up is Theme Park. Now this is a whole device theming engine for the most part. You just click to create a new theme. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select an image to base that theme around. This is of the OnePlus 8T. Um, 
I mean, you could use whatever your current wallpaper happens to be as the baseline, but I'm selecting this image. What Theme Park does, it analyzes the image and then pulls out various color combinations that are based on that image and kind of pairs them up and groups them up. I'm not good with color combinations myself usually, so having an app determine this all for me based on the image source material is totally ideal. Now, you're shown a list of the different aspects of the UI. That'll be affected once this theme is applied, and you can tweak that and play around with it and find the one that's just right. There also happens to be a keyboard theming engine here um, as well for changing the color combinations on the keyboard. You can also do things like embed images into certain aspects of the keyboard. If you want things to look a little noisier, uh, go for it that way. Just tap one of the dotted circles, and then you can choose the color or image, and there's all these different ways that you can go in and change and alter each aspect of the keyboard that's on your device. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Now with 25 million users and 70,000 businesses, it's no surprise why they are the award-winning number one password manager. They help you transition your remote workforce. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so IT always has insight into who has access to what and from where. LastPass has won eight awards this year, and you don't have to just take our word for it. LastPass really speaks for itself. Visit LastPass.com com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Next up is nice catch. And this one is all about monitoring the various things that apps on your device do while you're not looking. And it attempts to catch them uh, in the act, which is you know probably why they called it nice catch, which isn't to say that all of this activity is inherently bad, just that you might want to know what's going on, and now you can. You can use this to find out. For instance, which apps have made a vibration event on your device and when? Uh, maybe there are some apps that are just really, really heavy with the vibration, or one happened and you lost track of it. Here you can see the history. Or apps that have woken the screen from sleep. That can be very helpful uh, to see which apps are doing this all the time. Maybe it's a drain on battery. It can detect when an app shows an ad after you unlock your device, which is something that doesn't happen a whole lot to me anyways. But if it does to you, you're going to love that feature. Uh, many of these actually didn't apply to the apps that I have installed on my Note 20 Ultra, but it's definitely worth taking a look at uh, in any case. If anything, you get a better sense of how some apps are operating behind the scenes. One-handed operation plus. All right, this one is pretty self-explanatory, especially on a device as large as the Note 20 Ultra. One-handed operation isn't always easy to do on a device this big. Uh, so this, one-handed operation plus, actually creates wide bars on the sides of the display that should be easier for your one hand, maybe it's your thumb, to swipe in from. Now you can swipe straight, you can swipe diagonal up and diagonal down. And you can set each of those to a different action. It could be navigation or really any shortcut that you like. There's a whole bunch of options that you can pick from. There are adjustments for creating a larger or a smaller bar to be drawing that swipe from. You can position it wherever on the sides that you choose. And some apps might not actually like this kind of interaction. This might get in the way. So there is a way to hide the controls on a per app basis. If you find an app that doesn't play nice with this, you can just put it in there and this feature will not be running when you're using that app. Next up is Edge Lighting Plus. Now this is a nice subtle animation that you've probably seen before. It happens around the border of the display on the device when a notification appears and the display happens to be off. It's kind of like a little laser shot sort of thing. Here, you can customize what exactly happens on a deeper level than you could normally. It could be as simple as a single blue line, or it could you know, echo with multiple lines edging their way inward, or a big blue bubble that just kind of pulsates outward from the top. A whole bunch of options here, and you can find uh, a number of different options to choose from and just kind of bring some life to your display when it's off and a notification comes in. There also happen to be controls to adjust the thickness of those elements, how long they appear for, and any sort of transparency. Do they let the background through um, or do they overtake it completely? Uh, lots of controls. And on the edge tip, we've got edge touch. Uh, if you've ever heard of 
the complaints, and I know I'm guilty of this, about unwanted touches registered on devices that happen to have curved displays. It's really easy to accidentally touch the, the edge of a curved display and have it register a touch. And like, I didn't mean to do that. It launched an app or whatever it did. Well, Edge Touch is a way to customize a touch-free zone on any device but I'd say it's really useful on those curved display devices. Uh, you, you can set up initially a blocked zone uh, by dragging this like mover button around. This zone is gonna register no touch when Edge Touch is running. Anything within this zone will not register. Grip zone is a secondary section. Uh, kind of, it's almost like this expands it a little bit. It won't register a touch if the device knows it's being actively held at the moment. So then it knows it's in your hand. Maybe you're more likely to touch even further in from that initial blocked zone. This will reject that if it knows it's in your hand. And you can set different zones for landscape view as well. And finally, sound assistant. This one has everything to do, duh, with the sound on your device. Uh, you can craft your own custom volume panel theme so it doesn't only appear up top in a sliver the way it does by default on the Note 20 Ultra, at least as in one example. If you want it coming out of the side, you can do that. Um, you can allow for volumes to be set on a per app basis. So maybe there's an app that you launch and man, the volume is just, it's ear piercingly loud when you launch the app and you just want to knock that down to a sane level. Or maybe you want it that ear piercingly loud and you want other apps to be quieter. Whatever the case, you can set those on a per app basis. Um, you can also adjust how quickly the volume is adjusted when you hold the volume rocker down. And then there's a couple of features dealing with multi-apps and multi-sound. Multi-sound is a feature that allows you to set apps so that they can play sound while another app is in use. So multitasking really comes into play here again. That's a nice feature. Separate app sound allows you to isolate one app's audio into something like a Bluetooth device while other apps still output sound on the phone itself. So you could route maybe your audiobook or your, the music that you're listening to just to your Bluetooth speaker and then have your notifications coming out of the phone. I'm sure you could come up with a, a scenario as to why you would want to do that. And then there's, of course, an integrated EQ with presets. You could throw some reverb on the audio, I suppose, Dolby Atmos, and a whole lot more. And really, when you're talking about good luck, it's all about and a whole lot more because there's so much in there. I did not touch on everything. I mean, there are so many features in here. You really just kind of got to get in there and play around and, and you'll surely find some things. You'd be like, God, I didn't know that existed, but this is a lifesaver for me. Or it just makes your device a little bit more fun, a little bit more you. That's what customization is all about. And the good thing is we've seen over the last few years that Samsung regularly adds new modules into GoodLock. So the customization capability of it expand uh, all the time. So have it installed. You'll see when new modules appear and uh, open up even more avenues on your Samsung device. Uh, send me your emails to hoa at twit.tv. I appreciate it when you do that. And you can subscribe to Hands on Android by going to twit.tv slash hoa. There you can find links to all the podcatchers so you can subscribe uh, in any podcatcher that you happen to be using, as well as link out to YouTube if you want to subscribe there. Doesn't matter to me, just as long as you do. Big thanks to our editor, John Ashley, and thanks to you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.